Hi friends, my name is Mike. I'm a videographer and a dad and part of my continuing mission to take my kids to a bunch of really cool places here in the West is to document it um, for you all to watch on YouTube. And when I do that, I get cute little nuggets like this. Sweet. Or this one. Ah! Or maybe even this one. But anyway, when I'm documenting this stuff on video, I almost always need batteries. I bring lots of batteries with me, but invariably I need more batteries and more power, which means I need some kind of way to charge those batteries on the trail. Well, this is Chase here from Craft Auto Works, and he's come up with a really cool system that integrates into the truck and provides a ton of power for all of the things that you need, like fridges and water pumps, and electric sleeping blankets for the trail. So we're gonna learn about those today. Ever since I was a kid, we'd go to these places where you could see out over the landscape and the mountains or the deserts. And I would imagine what it would be like to be there a hundred years ago where there were no roads, no power lines, and no chance that anybody was gonna be out there to help you, no stores, no nothing, and nothing on the other side of it all. Today we do have roads, we have maps, we have gas stations, we know there's something on the other side of the mountains, on the other side of the desert. We know that if we do break down, chances are somebody will come along at least in a couple days to help us out, and that's comforting. It's also comforting to know that there are still those wild places without a lot of impact, where you can go and look out over the landscape and pretend that you're a pioneer seeing it for the first time. But roads and trails are our gateways to these places. And no matter who you are or why you're here, I believe it's the connection to these vast untouched lands and the beauty of these places that draws us all here. While roads and trails are an impact and a mark on an otherwise untouched land that you can see in the background of all the pictures you take out here, I believe it's a good and necessary one because it allows us that connection. What I try to do is to limit my impact to the roads and trails and developed areas and leave the rest alone. We can do this by staying on the roads and trails and turning around and parking and camping and stopping in places that are either already impacted or are specifically designated for those purposes. If we can do that, we can be sure that these areas will remain open and accessible for ourselves and whoever else may come along. Let me know in the comments what draws you out to these places and what you try to do to preserve it. Okay, let's get back to the show. Thanks for joining us today, Chase. Tell us what this is and why you built it. Yes, yeah, so this is our Overland electrical system. We call it the OES Pro. Basically, this is a lithium dual battery kit that's completely pre-built and ready to tie into a vehicle. Uh, we wanted to create a system that, unlike a lot of other camping batteries on the market, was really purpose-built for vehicle integration. A lot of other systems on the market uh, you know, have a lot of nice features, but the, one of the big drawbacks is they don't fast charge from a vehicle or from DC charging. And that's really a big issue when you're out on the trail and want to be able to have a lot of power, uh, but don't have a lot of other means of charging it other than the vehicle itself. Right, so what he means is that um, if you have like a Goal Zero or a Yeti or a, no, Goal Zero is a Yeti. A Yeti is a Goal Zero. Yep. If you have a Goal Zero or a Jackery or something like that, you'll plug that into um, a 12 volt port in your truck, or uh, if the case is these Tacomas have a, inverter in the back here, you can plug that into the inverter and then when the truck's running, it'll charge it. Um, what do you mean when you say integrated? Yeah, so if you wanna use the DC fast charging on the system, which is uh, using a Kisei DC to DC charger that we have built into the unit, uh, all that needs to be done is just to run a 10 gauge cable from the vehicle starter battery to a port uh, on your vehicle, whether it's you know in the bedside of the truck like I have in my Tacoma here, or maybe just a cable run inside of a vehicle like in a 4Runner Jeep, something right. like that. With that set up, you can run uh, up to 30 amps of DC charging directly into this unit. Um, and it's a smart charger as well. So when the vehicle's running, you're charging from it. And when the vehicle turns off, the uh, OES detects that and automatically stops pulling from the vehicle so that you don't accidentally kill your starter battery. You don't have to do anything. Right, so it's basically always on. You don't have to like remember to hit the switch to turn the 
to turn the inverter on like you do in the Tacoma. And you don't have to be worried about this sucking your battery down. Exactly. So you've got, he's got a port right over here that he plumbed in straight from the battery back to here. And he just plugs it in with, uh, what is the name of the connector here? It's a, just a standard two pole SAE port. Two pole SAE port just goes straight from there to the side of the truck bed there and it charges whenever he's running so you don't have to even think about it, right? Exactly. And it's kind of nice. So we talked about this earlier in the minimalist Tacoma build video. Um, like you take, a lot of people might build all of this stuff into their truck. Absolutely, and a lot of people do. And a lot of people do, and there's something to be said for that. Yeah. But people like to say, I use my truck for a truck. Well, I use my truck for a truck too. Anyway, so when you're not overlanding, this comes out and it's not in the truck and nothing's in the truck bed and you can use your truck as a truck. So that's kind of handy. Plus it's not always providing complexity and stuff that's carrying around in your truck. Like this is, this is weighs, you know, 40 pounds ish. It's not, it's not super heavy. It's not super light, yeah. but it's more weight that you need in your truck all the time. Right. Yep. If you don't need it in it, just pull it right out. And when you need it in, just toss it in, make one cable connection and mm -hmm. you're ready to go. So um, what are the main uh, things that are, so this is comparable to a Goal Zero Yeti 15? Yeah, the 1500X is kind of what we designed this thing to compete with. They're identical in price, nearly identical in battery capacity. Uh -huh. And really the main differences are the enclosure, the power output, and the charging systems. Right. So you've got a lot more power outputs. There's six DCs and a bunch of USBs. This is USB in addition to being a voltmeter. Um, you've got um, one 110 volt. Yep, 500 watt inverter uh, watt built inverter. in there and shore power in. And shore, shore power in, solar in, alternator in. Yep. And so it's got a lot more inputs and outputs than a normal, go a normal battery pack that you might have in your truck already. Um, this box looks familiar. That is a front runner wolf pack case. So we wanted to build this thing into something that was a weather resistant and could take a serious beating. So, uh -huh. you know, light rain, snow, things like that. Really not a concern with this kind of case. Um, and a lot of people are using front runner cases anyway. So right. it's really nice just to be able to have something that nests in with your existing gear loadout. Right. And the, the, you haven't changed the shape of this. So you could stack this on top of another front runner. Yep. You could stack another front runner on top of this. Exactly. And just keep going. There's only stuff on this side. And then there's what? There's like a screw, a couple screws on this side. Or just a couple little flush bolts on the back side. Bolts. So again, yeah. nothing that it would affect how this nests with uh, the rest of your gear. And it's not obviously. It's not obviously a $2,000 piece of equipment either. No, if you kind of tuck this away, right. it just sort of looks like a regular gear case. Right. Um, so it's kind of, when this gets covered with dust, it'd be kind of hidden. Kind a little of bit. Under the radar. Um, and so then the main difference, what, are the, what is the main difference between this and the Yeti 1500? Yes, the main things that we really did differently were, you know, again, the, with the focus being on vehicle integration, we wanted a setup that is, has a lot of DC power output. So with the six cigarette outlets, three QC3 USB ports and a USB-C power delivery port, we've got up to uh, 80 amps of DC output uh, versus a lot of the other camping batteries that are maybe around 10 amps with a couple USB ports and that's about it. So if you do have a lot of devices, fridge, water pump, heating blanket, lights, things like that, that all run off cigarette outlet, you're going to be having to constantly swap those connectors around versus our system where you can just leave everything plugged in because you got a ton of outputs right. on it. The other uh, major difference is, you know, a lot of those camping batteries have a big inverter in them. Uh, and a lot of times people aren't using a lot of AC power while out on trail. So we kind of designed around that as well and focused on the DC output and just have a 500 watt uh, inverter here just to kind of cover the basics of just, you know, smaller things like, you know, laptop charger, bigger drone battery or camera right. battery chargers, things like that. Can we open it up and take a look inside? Absolutely. Those wonderful front runner clips. They are good for that. So we've got a big Renogy, uh, what, is this a lithium ion? Lithium iron phosphate, right? Yeah, so this is a LifePo battery. Um, this is their 12 volt, 100 amp hour with the integrated self heating. So that's one other interesting difference between our system and other ones on the market uh -huh. is this you can really use for four season outdoor use. Uh, 
one of the only issues with lithium batteries is if they get below freezing, you can discharge them, but you can't charge them. Uh -huh. So with the integrated heating system in this, uh, if the battery detects that it's below freezing and you're going to charge it, it'll recognize that that's the case, divert all the incoming power to the integrated heating system, warm the battery cells up to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and then automatically switch over to charging without you having to do anything. Cool. So then we have, and that's all internal into the battery. It is. So we got a battery here. We've got the NOCO um, AC to DC charger. Is that what that is? Yeah, so that's the Shore Power shore Genius power 10 charger. charger. Yeah. And then we've got a 100 amp um, breaker. Yep. And then the DC to DC charger. And then we've got the um, Victron energy inverter over there. And then these are all panel mount fixtures, input outputs over here, like you would see in a boat. Correct. Or pretty much every overlander at this point in time. Yep. <laughs> so it's, it's fairly simple. Like let's say my inverter dies. How hard is it to get that inverter out of here? So that's one of the last kind of benefits of our system versus a lot of the pre-built uh, you know, camping batteries out there is these are handmade right here in Reno, which means they're also hand serviceable. Okay. So if the, in the unlikely event that anything does die, uh, it's all repairable. You know, any unit can be pulled out, swapped back in, many of these in a matter of minutes. Right. And this is Renogy, and that's that's uh, Blue Sea and NOCO. And all these brands are and products are have been around for a while and aren't really going anywhere. We really want to stick with major manufacturers that are producing quality gear, uh, you know, both for the quality of the product itself and the ongoing serviceability where, you know, we want these to all be using products that are going to be readily available on the market for many years to come. Cool. Great. Anything else we didn't uh, talk about just now? Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, the last you know, couple things on the front are, you know, we do have a kill switch kill here switch. for long-term storage. Um, that way you can just shut the whole system off and that disconnects the bus bar from the battery. So it's okay. good for, for that. Um, and then the, uh, the DC charger, one of the other nice features about it is it, uh, besides being auto disconnect from the vehicle when the vehicle turns off, it's also auto switching between solar oh, and okay. alternator charging. So if you do have both plugged in, it'll prioritize the vehicle. If it detects the vehicle turns off, it automatically switches over to solar. Again, you don't have to unplug or plug anything in. Sweet. Sounds good. So since we shot this, uh, Chase has developed a new battery. It'll be a custom Kraft Auto Works band branded battery, and it's gonna have a lower, low state of charge restart. So the BMS, the battery management system in these batteries will shut off the battery so it won't discharge past 10 volts or something. Um, but there are some cases where it can get so low that the BMS in like the Renogy system wouldn't wake the battery up uh, when you plugged it back into power. So the new battery will um, have a lower uh, state of charge wake up so you can plug it back in at a lower state of charge and it'll start back up. Do I know what that means? Not really. Um, so in the future, like in the next couple weeks or months, we're gonna make a video for Kraft probably and he'll go into much more detail about that. So if you wanna know more about that, he's been posting stuff to their Instagram channel. Uh, you can go ask him questions about that specifically. If you wanna purchase one of these, you can go to craftautoworks.com and order one there, it'll ship it to you. If you're in the Reno Tahoe area or passing through, you can go to Rack to Rome. They've got a couple on the floor there, ready to go. Thanks for watching, happy trails, bye-bye.